Governor Charlie Baker still has not announced if he plans to run for a third term next year. But if he does jump into the race, he's already got a primary challenger to contend with. Fellow Republican Jeff Deal, who served as a state rep for eight years, helped lead a successful effort on the ballot to repeal the indexing of the gas tax to inflation, co-chaired the campaign of Donald Trump here in 2016, and ran against Senator Elizabeth Warren in 2018. He launched his gubernatorial bid on Sunday. He joins me now. Jeff Deal, it's good to see you. It's been quite a while. Great to see you, Jim. Thank you. Why are you doing this, Jeff? You know what? I ran in 2010 for state rep because I thought I could make a difference for the town I live in, for the towns I represented. I got to see a lot more when I got to Beacon Hill about what's going on in the state, and I got to see a lot more in 2018 when I ran for U.S. Senate. I think I've got still something to give for Massachusetts, and I'd like to uh, obviously run in the Republican primary, and then if I have an opponent, and then take my case to the people for 2022. But it's pretty obvious that if you're running, uh, and particularly if you're announcing before the incumbent Republican announces that you think that he's not doing some things the way he should, that you would do differently. Give me an example or two of things that fall into that category. Well, I mean, let's start with the fact that in 2014, I led the repeal of the index gas tax. At that time, candidate Baker was with me on that. Now he's proposing TCI, which even the Sierra Club is saying is really not going to create the uh, environmental impact that they, people were hoping. It's really going to be more of a, just an additional tax on uh, commuters. It's going to be cost more for families. So, you know, now he's the only state, Massachusetts is the only state currently hanging on to this TCI thing. I think he needs to let it go, but uh, it doesn't seem like that's happening. That's you just have, one but example. Have, but the underlying goal there is to limit carbon pollution, reduce, reduce emissions. Even if you don't like the way he would get there, do you share the goal? An unelected bureaucratic body decides what the cap and trade cost is going to be that gets passed on to people. I don't like that, uh, the way it's set up. And I also think, again, Sierra Club says the uh, benefits to the environment are negligible. You know, Jeff, you also, uh, I know, have criticized the governor's handling of uh, COVID. Where did he get it wrong that you would have gotten it right? Well, right off the bat, a lot of people who own small businesses either had to lay off their employees or furlough them. Uh, small businesses were shut down immediately. I saw zero layoffs, zero furloughs from state government. Even when we have storms, you know, there's non-essential employees that go home. Nobody was non-essential in state government. So there was no, no sort of reciprocity or alignment with the people who basically are working in the private sector from the state side. I thought that was one initial mistake. Obviously, the rollout of the vaccine scheduling was another problem. And I think, you know, again, we've we've seen with the soldiers home, there was issues with how we managed, uh, you know, people with, you know, the state managed uh, patients with, with COVID. Do you hold Charlie Baker responsible for the death of 76, actually 77, counting one a year later, deaths at that soldier's home? You know what? I also don't hold him responsible for the death of those seven, you know, Marines that were killed when the RMV didn't pull the license but, of that person. But I do think it's his administration that failed at the RMV. I think they failed with the Holyoke home. You know, you mentioned uh, you mentioned small businesses in your announcement. You said, and I remain mystified, how the big box stores like Home Depot remained open while your local hardware store was forced to close. My local hardware store was open, and they told me when I walked in they were an essential business. What are you talking about? Well, look, not every small business was able to get that essential clarification or status, whatever it was. I mean, let's face it, there it's been pretty recognized that across the country and in Massachusetts, the big box stores were left open while the small smaller businesses were forced to suffer and, and be closed. My wife and I own a small business. We were forced to close. Yeah. But, you know, we adapted immediately to the technology and got kids online for dance classes, of all things, with Zoom. You know, I think that uh, the private sector was able to be resilient, but really not without a lot of interference by government. Well, you also mentioned the vaccination uh, screw up at the beginning, which he acknowledged. We have now one of the highest vaccination rates in the country. Does he deserve credit for that? We also have the third highest, you know, per capita death rate. I mean, does he deserve blame for that? So, Jeff, there was a recent poll in the Globe, Suffolk poll in the Globe, talking about the direction the state is going in. Let me, I'm sure you're familiar with this. Democrats, who are a third of the electorate, 79 to 12 said right direction. Independents, they're 57 percent of the electorate unenrolled. 60 to 26. The only group that was roughly a dead heat were Republicans. Only 10% of the electorate are Republicans. Obviously, that's under Baker's leadership. 
Who is the deal voter? Where, where do you find? It's not enough to get <laughs> Republicans to vote for you to end up being elected governor, as you know far better than I. Who is the deal voter in this mix where overwhelmingly people support the governor and think we're moving in the right direction? Well, Jim, this may shock you. I don't know if you checked these numbers, but I was actually the third highest vote getter in 2018, even though there was a distance between myself and Elizabeth Warren. So the fact of the matter is people know who I am. They know what I stand for. I think they appreciate it. And this state will elect someone who is a Republican governor. I may be center right. Charlie Baker may govern center left. But I think given the choice of who the Democratic nominee may be, center right may be you know what they're looking for let me use your words uh, you said w what we stand for the republican uh, state committee the party here the chair of the party refused to uh, uh, listen to governor baker and i believe every republican elected to the legislature with one exception saying they should get rid of a committee member who said she was quote sickened by the fact that a republican candidate for congress uh, uh, in the worcester area uh, actually had adopted kids. He was gay. He and his partner adopted uh, uh, kids. Baker said uh, she should be thrown off the committee. Uh, the chair of the state committee said it was a free speech issue. Which side are you on there? So first of all, I totally side with the candidate, Jeffrey Sousa Paquette, very nice guy, lovely mm -hmm. family, absolutely support his run for Congress. Secondly, I think the state committee woman who made the comments was wrong in what she said. The biggest problem we have is that our bylaws don't permit for removal of a member for free speech. And I understand that that speech may not be anything that anybody agrees with. All I'm saying is there is nothing in our bylaws that allows for removal. In 2016, as I said in your introduction, you were co-chair of Massachusetts Trump for president. If he were to choose to run again in 2024, he said he's made up his mind, he's not going to tell us for a while, would you, and he offered you the same position, would you take it? You know, I, 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 hypotheticals are crazy, right? I, first of all, uh, I don't think I'd be allowed on the show again if I in, endorsed uh, Donald Trump, right? Is that right? You're, no. By the way, you were, I don't know if you recall, <laughs> you were chair in 2016, and you're on the show now, and you're on the chair you're then. Right. So that is irrelevant. Right. Would you take accept the offer if it was made in 2024? I don't think he's running it, so I, I think it's a hypothetical that's not even would, it, okay. would not even exist. No hypothetical. He says he won the election. <laughs> it was stolen. Is he right? Uh, no, look, those states, obviously, they've got to clear, sort out if they had any problems with voting. But uh, look, I don't think it was a stolen election. I just think that, again, at this point, we need to move forward, stop crying over spilled milk as a Republican Party, and look towards the future of who's going to be the best candidate for 24. You know, what, would, if you were had been elected to the Senate, had beaten Elizabeth Warren, would you have voted for that bipartisan commission on uh, January six that was rejected by uh, all the Republicans there? Jim, you know my history in the legislature. I've actually voted for more transparency all the time. I think that, yes, I would have voted for a commission to make sure that we get to the bottom, good or bad or ugly. Let's figure it out and not let it happen again. So, uh, Jeff Deal, one more hypothetical that you don't like, but, <laughs> you know, that's the nature of the business. You're running potentially against Charlie Baker. Again, we don't know if he's the announced, it will announce. Let's assume he does run. Let's assume he does win the primary and he's the Republican candidate for governor of Massachusetts for a third time. Would he have uh, your support? Of course. Look, I supported him in 2010, 14, 18, even after the debate when he said he wasn't sure he was going to support me in 2018 mm -hmm. for U.S. Senate, I still supported him. Look, it's about putting the best candidate forward that the Republican Party can, and if he becomes the nominee, absolutely, I'll be behind him. So, Jeff, you'll be back here again when you're invited, is that correct? <laughs> hope it's often. Jeff, it's great to see you. Congratulations on your candidacy. Good luck, and I do hope to see you often over the next year. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Jim. Take care.